Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I want to talk to you about a concept in time series analysis called backtesting. Now, the reason I'm really, really excited for this video, we do a lot of cool videos on this channel, we even do some with code. This is code that I actually use in my daily life to actually figure out what stock trading strategies I want to employ as opposed to others. And as that might suggest, backtesting is very typically used when you have some kind of strategy for stock trading or some kind of finance related application. And you've trained that strategy on historical data and you'd like to know whether or not that's a good strategy or whether or not that strategy A is better than some other strategy B. And the way we do it is that we say, okay, I'm hoping in the future this strategy will give me some kind of positive outcome. Now, I can't run this on the future because I don't know what's happened in the future yet. So instead, I'm going to visit some previous time period, try out my strategy there, and see what it would have done and see if it would have given me a positive outcome in that previous time period. And so I've written this notebook here to actually do that, to actually test out some stock trading strategies on whatever stock symbol you want. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But before that, let's talk about a couple of other names that this goes by because as I've learned through the years, every discipline chooses to have its own name for the same concept. So I wanna make sure that you can mentally connect all of these terms as the same thing. So we're talking about back testing. And I think this is typically used in finance applications. So back testing is the word for finance. Now in the more general machine learning community, you might see this called cross validation on historical data. So we know about cross validation. We have a whole video on it, which I'll link in the description below. And this is just a special type of cross validation where you're saying, how is my model going to perform on some time period in the past? So it's cross validation on historical data. Another term in the machine learning community you might hear this called is post-diction, which is kind of like the opposite of prediction. So when you predict something, actually those two words from Latin pre means before and dict means say. So you're saying before it happens, I'm going to say what's going to happen. Post-diction is saying I'm going to say what's going to happen about that event, even though that event has already happened in the past. And yet another term for all this, if you're coming here from the atmospheric sciences field, would be hind casting. So this is like the opposite of forecasting. So when the meteorologist is on TV and he or she makes a forecast about how much it's going to rain tomorrow or how sunny it's going to be tomorrow. Hind casting is the same idea, but on weather patterns that have already occurred in the past. And so if we built a model to predict how much it's going to rain, we would use all the data before yesterday to predict how much it would have rained yesterday and compare that to the actual amount. So Backtesting, cross-validation on historical data, post-diction, hindcasting. Post-diction is also called retro-diction sometimes. But the main point is if you hear any of these terms, they're likely talking about the same concept. And the exact term they use can give you a clue about what field you are in. So I'll just walk you through the high-level ideas of the code here. It won't go too deep into every little thing that's happening. But if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. This code, as I said before, will be available to you in the description below. Feel free to edit it as you would like. So the first thing, if you want to use this code as is, is put the symbol of the stock that you want to test different strategies on. So today I've chosen Microsoft, but you can choose any valid ticker symbol here. Here are the functions that are going to be making all of this happen. This is a simple date to string conversion function. This function gets ticker data about a symbol. So you can see we pass in that symbol here, in this case Microsoft, and we pass in a start and end date. And it calls the Yahoo Finance Library to get us historical stock prices between the start and end date for that symbol. So this is a strategy class. It defines what are the rules for buying and selling this stock on historical data. So it takes in two arguments in its initializer, the buy condition, which is a tuple of two elements, and a sell condition, which is also a tuple of two elements. So each of these two variables, the buy condition and the sell condition, the first item in their tuple is going to tell you if you're going to buy or sell if the stock is decreasing or increasing. So let's just walk through that logic really fast just to make sure we understand why all of these combinations are potentially good ideas. Think about buying a stock. Why would you want to buy a stock when the stock price is decreasing? If you believe that the stock price is going to start increasing pretty soon, then now is a good time to buy because you're kind of buying at a bottom where you're buying at a very cheap price and then you believe it's gonna go up in the future. Conversely, why would you buy when the stock price is going up? Well, if you think this is just the beginning of a hot streak, 
then you're basically saying, oh, the stock price is gonna keep going up. The stock is doing really well. Let me buy now so that I don't have to buy at a more expensive price later on. Now you could be totally wrong, but if those are your assumptions, then it makes sense in either case to buy when the stock price is decreasing or increasing. On the other hand, the sell conditions are very similar. So why would you sell a stock when the price is going down? Well, if you believe the price is gonna keep going down for the foreseeable future, then you want to avoid any further losses. And so you're saying, I'm gonna get rid of these stocks right now. Conversely, why would you sell a stock when the price is going up? Well, just like in the buy condition, the opposite argument holds here. If you think the price is gonna start going down very soon, so you think this is some kind of local maximum, then it would be a good idea to sell now before the stock price starts going down and you're losing value. So this strategy encodes the ability to consider all of those rules. And the other argument, the second argument in the buy condition and sell condition tuple are going to be the number of periods of consecutive behavior. For example, if our buy condition tuple looks like this, increase followed by two, then this says that according to this strategy, if the stock price is increasing for two periods in a row, so two days in a row, then go ahead and buy it. Uh, another example, if our sell condition says decrease five, sell the stock if it's decreasing for five periods in a row. Now here is the function that's pretty much driving everything, which is executing that strategy. So this accepts some data frame of historical data about your stock, and also a strategy that you want to employ on that historical data. So this is actually doing the backtesting. So it assumes you start with $100, and then it remembers that initial value and you also own zero shares of that stock right now. So we visit every single row in our historical data. And for every single row, the next thing we do is we update whether or not the stock price has been increasing or decreasing for an additional period. So that's what this chunk of code is doing. Then if we're currently not holding the stock, we check if any of our buy conditions are met from the strategy. So you can see the strategy in action in this long if statement here. So it says, if the strategy's buy direction is decreasing, and if the number of periods of decrease is equal to the strategy's number of periods decrease required, or if the strategy's buy direction is increasing in the other condition, the number of increasing periods so far is equal to the strategy's buy periods, then go ahead and update all our variables, which represents us buying shares of the stock. So for this simple code here, when we buy or sell, we assume we just completely buy or sell the stock. So either we have zero dollars in the bank and we're only holding shares, or we have all our money in the bank and we're not holding any shares. But this code is very flexible. I would encourage you to download it and make it work for more realistic use cases too, where you want to partially hold some of the stock and you partially want to have money in the bank. And the code down here is just the symmetric example where we're deciding whether or not we should sell the stock based on our strategy. We get the final value. So the final value is calculated as the maximum money we have in the bank or the maximum value we have in terms of the shares we're holding and then we return the percent gain from our initial value. So in other words, what this function is really doing, it's saying, given some historical data about the past and given a strategy on that historical data, execute that strategy and tell me what my percent return would have been. And so here's two strategies that we're gonna try in this video. We've named them very descriptively. So the first one says, buy if the stock is decreasing for two periods and sell if it's increasing for two periods. And the second one says buy if it's decreasing for five periods and sell if it's increasing for five periods. And so you can see defining a strategy is pretty simple here. So intuitively, you can think of this first strategy as being based on shorter time period things. So you're just gonna wait two days before making a buy or sell decision. You just want to observe that pattern for two days. The second strategy might be employed by someone who prefers to wait a whole week before they make a decision about whether to buy or sell. So this reflects two possible different behaviors in investors one who doesn't need to see too much evidence and is willing to make a decision right away, and one who needs to see a little bit more evidence before they're gonna commit to anything. So we create our strategies dictionary here, and then we go ahead and just use all the cool code we wrote above in order to backtest. Now, this piece of the video is important because I wanna talk about some drawbacks to backtesting and how we're setting up this code to deal with those drawbacks and which drawbacks we can't really deal with no matter how hard we try. So the first thing I've written here is that we're going to assume that we want to implement our strategy for 30 days. And so when we look at historical data, we're gonna take some 30 day chunk of data in order to test our strategy out. So let's get all of the dates of 2022. So this all dates contains every day from January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. We get all of the historical data from Microsoft. 
And then we go ahead down here and we do a kind of curious thing. It may seem a little confusing at first, but once you think about it a little bit more, when we explain it, it's gonna seem like the proper thing to do. So what we're doing here is we're saying for every single start date in 2022, I wanna see what our two strategies would have done. This is extremely important, folks. When you backtest, you need to see what the strategy would have done on many historical time periods. If you just do it on one, then, well, you might get some results, but it might be totally non-representative of what would have happened on average. For example, starting your strategy on January 1st and going the 30 days through the end of January might give you positive returns. And maybe based on that, you would just say, oh, this is a great strategy, I'm gonna employ it. But it turns out if you tested that same strategy in February and March and April and so on and so on, actually you get very negative returns. So in order to reduce the variance in our final decision, we are going to test our strategy as if it started at every single day in 2022, up until a month before 2022 ended, because again, our strategy needs to run for one month total. So every day from January 1st until December 1st, we are going to pretend we started each of our strategies on that day, run it for a month and see what our return would have been for each of our strategies. So this is a super important thing to do in backtesting to make sure you're not making decisions on just one data point, on just one historical time period. Now, what I mentioned before is that even with this, it's not like we have full guarantees on what our model is going to do in the future. Time series are a tricky thing, and just because some model has been proven to give you positive returns last year, really does not guarantee anything about this year. For example, everything could have been normal with Microsoft last year, but let's say that tomorrow, Microsoft has an unexpected data breach its stock price goes down and just kind of stays down for three months. That's not really something you could have prepared for and these models won't help you with that. But in general, this is one of the best tools that we have in order to make a good decision about whether or not one strategy is better than another. So we go ahead and run this code and then we plot our results. And here is what our results look like. So let's take a minute and see what is going on. The x-axis is the percentage return of any of the strategies. This red distribution is the returns from the buy if it's decreasing for two periods and sell if it's increasing for two periods strategy. And the really exciting news here is that this gray dashed line being 0% return, this red dashed line says that actually on average, you're expected to gain about 1.4%. So the return on investment is about 1.4% over the course of a month if you were to use this strategy. Conversely, if you use the buy decreasing five periods, sell increasing five period strategy, that's actually slightly negative here. So this red distribution has a higher return on investment, but a higher risk as well. And that's another very important reason that we look at these distributions instead of just these point estimates. So hopefully you understand backtesting. Why don't we just play around with this? I haven't really tried any other strategies. So if you wanna add a new strategy, just add a new cell here. Let's maybe say I'm gonna buy if it's increasing for three periods, and I'm gonna sell if it's decreasing for five periods. So our buy condition will be increase, increase three, and then this will be decrease for five. So we'll run that cell, we'll add this to our list of strategies that we wanna test, and then we'll just rerun everything and we'll see. So this new green distribution gets added, the buy increase three, sell decrease five, and that's probably not a great idea. That's even worse than the blue distribution here. So please feel free to download this notebook, try out different strategies, replace the ticker with something else besides Microsoft, extend the notebook as you want to deal with more complicated strategies than just these. And that's maybe the last thing I'll say about backtesting is that when you build your time series model, it can be as simple, like today we kept things pretty simple, or complicated as you want. You could have models that are complicated neural network, recurrent neural network based architectures for figuring out the stock price in the future. The same backtesting strategy will work. This is something that you run after your model, no matter what your model is. You run backtesting in order to take your model, run it on many different periods of historical data, and see how your model would have performed in some recent historical period to give you a good idea about how it's going to perform in the future. So hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are welcome below, and I'll see you next time.